We now move on to looking at solving equations that also involve fractions. Remember that when we're solving fractions, we want to keep in mind our central philosophy that whatever we do to one side, we must do to the other side exactly the same thing. This is in order to keep the balance that we have in an equation. So a solution process for equations involving fractions is pretty similar to what we already know about solving equations. We're just going to add a little step in at the start. What we want to do is obtain an equation without fractions by multiplying both sides of the equation by the denominators of each fraction. This will remove the fractions and leave us with an equation of the form we're more familiar with. Once we've done that, we can remove brackets using the distributive law, add and subtract any like terms before isolating the unknown, performing identical operations to each side. Finally, remember that we always want to check our solution because it's an easy step to make sure that we've got things correctly. Let's have a look at this example. Consider the following equation. z squared on 2 minus xy on n is equal to xy over 2m. The example here gives us a few steps to pass through here. Now if you'd like, stop the video now and have a go yourself before coming back and following through with me. We're asked in part A, what must each side be multiplied by to remove all of the fractions? We can think about this one step at a time. Looking at the first term, to remove the fraction here we could multiply by 2. That would also mean we'd have to multiply this term by 2 and this term by 2 in order to keep the balance of the equation. While applying similar thinking, to get rid of the n we'd need to multiply both sides by n and to get rid of this 2m we'd need to multiply both sides by 2m. So all in all we could say that for part a the, two, the equations both sides of the equation need to be multiplied by 2nm in order to remove all of the fractions. Part b asks us to multiply each side of the equation by the answer to a. So we're going to multiply our equation by 2nm. Let's just write it out in full first. On the right hand side 2nm multiplied by xy over 2m. We can expand things on the left and find that we'll have z squared nm with the 2s cancelling each other. Then with minus xy over n multiplied by 2nm we have 2mxy and here the n's cancel. On the right hand side the 2's and the m's will cancel and we're left with nxy. Part c says to isolate the unknown by performing identical operations to each side. Well, there's actually a lot of letters in this equation, but I'm going to go with the usual uh, variable that we find to be the unknown as x. You could try this out yourself using any of the letters to be the one to rearrange for. You can try that out later. But for now, let's work with x. We can see that x appears in two of the terms, here and here. So I'm going to try to get those all on the one side by bringing this term over here and moving everything else, this term, over to the right hand side. So we have minus 2mxy subtracting nxy from both sides gives us minus nxy on the left and subtracting z squared nm from both sides leaves us with z squared nm with a negative on the right hand side. Now we can see that we've got the x's in both the terms on the left I'm going to factor them out and I'm left with minus 2my minus ny and the same right hand side. Next to isolate x I need to divide both sides by the factor in parentheses. So I have x on the left equal to minus z squared nm all divided by minus 2my minus ny. And that's pretty much it. We could also note that there's a minus all through the top and the bottom here. There's a common factor of minus 1 in other words which can be cancelled to leave us with z squared nm over 2my plus ny. And then we've sold for x. 
Part D says to check the solution by substituting the value of the unknown back into the original expression. I'm going to leave that one for you to try later. Essentially take that x that we've just found and substitute it back here into the original. You should be able to expand out and show that both sides are equal to the same thing. Let's have a look at one more example. We're going to try to solve this equation for b. Now you'll notice that b is appearing in both the numerator and the denominator of the right hand side. Well, all we need to do here is get rid of the fraction, but to do that we're going to have to multiply both sides of the equation by that denominator. So let's look at it. We start off with a equal to bc over b minus c, and I want to multiply both sides by b minus c. I'm going to put it in brackets so that I remember that it's, fra uh, that it's a factor. Multiplying through, I get a times b minus c on the left, and on the right, the b minus c's will cancel, leaving me with bc. Next, I'm going to expand the left-hand side so that I can get at the b and eventually try to isolate it. I get ab minus ac, and bc stays on the right. Now I need to get all my b's onto the same side, so I subtract bc from both sides. I'm also going to add ac to both sides to move that over to the right. Now we see we have all the b's on the left. They appear as a common factor in both those terms, so I'll factor it out. b outside of a minus c is equal to ac. Now finally, to get b by itself, I need to divide through by the, the term in parentheses, giving me b equal to ac over a minus c. And that's our solution for b. You can also try to substitute that back and show that both sides are equal, just to check your result. One more final example, we're going to solve this equation for x. You can see here that x only appears in the numerator, so it shouldn't be too hard. But there are a lot of fractions in here. So what we're going to have to do is multiply both sides by the pieces appearing in the denominator of the fractions to get rid of those fractions. So I'm going to multiply by not just y, but y squared, and also by 5. Doing so will give me 5y squared multiplied by x on y, or 5xy, minus y squared when I multiply 5y squared by 1 on 5, and on the right hand side, 5y squared by x on y squared will leave me with 5x. Now, remembering that I'm trying to solve for x, I need to bring all the x's over to the left-hand side somehow. I'll do this by subtracting 5x from both sides and getting rid of this term with no x's by adding y squared to both sides. So I have 5xy minus 5x is equal to y squared. Next, I note that I have x as a common factor on the left, so I factorize it out to give me x outside of 5y minus 5, still equal to y squared, and then dividing both sides by the, the factor in parentheses, giving us x equal to y squared over 5y minus 5. And we have our solution for x. Again, you can substitute back to check. So that's about it. Here in this video, we've seen how to use our skills of working with fractions and also the things that we know about solving equations to move on to solving more complicated equations that involve fractions. Make sure you get plenty of practice with these because there can be a few different kinds of equation that you have to deal with. But essentially, make sure that you're keeping in mind the steps and the central philosophy of balancing your equation.